Good morning, tubers. Welcome back for another adventure. You guys may not realize this, but the horde is the place that all these jump packs seem to go to to die. I'm showing you four right here. There's probably another half dozen, maybe even more, floating around that just, just have cashed out. Some people have given them to me. Some people have sold them to me, guaranteeing me, yeah, yeah, it's good, you just need to jump a charger. You know, basically, jump packs and me, I seem to kill them one after the next. Two of these have recently joined my horde. One was given to my son as a gift. He didn't charge it. Um, I don't think he charged it at all. And after a few months, the battery was just junk. It wouldn't take a charge. This one was mine, and it does come with an onboard charger. But if you actually use that and leave it plugged in, it overcharges the battery and it kills it. So what I did with um, this one is I put this little pigtail on here and I use my uh, Viking battery maintainer charger, high frequency uh, charger. And it does a good job keeping this battery up to par, but I'm still just not happy with the number of amps this thing has in it. For the bigger all-terrain vehicles, it just does not have the, um, the juice that I'd really like to turn them over. Um, some of the higher compression stuff kind of kicks back against it, even when it's fully charged, right? It seems to to be okay helping a car to start, but it, for the um, for the all-terrain vehicles, I'd really like something with a little more punch. So, given what I've just told you, let's say we take one of these old ones and take the clamps off of it and the switch and a few other things, and we combine it with one of these batteries from our friends at Walmart, one of these never starts. Uh, these bat this is a tractor battery. Um, they go for about 25 bucks, which is really pretty much a steal of a deal, right? Um, you could see this one was manufactured 521, so it's really in pretty nice shape. If you maintain these batteries, they last at the minimum of six months um, but if you actually keep them trickle charged and all you could get years out of these um, it says 230 coal cranking amps I measured it with my little four wire tester it came in at 280 um, which quite honestly is twice what this thing is coming in at this thing is coming in at about 130 so um, also typically better than like a motorcycle battery or, or an all-terrain vehicle battery, which also comes in around between 100 and 150. Some of the really nice ones come in somewhere around 180. So anyway, what is this? This is the battery box off of a, um, a mobility scooter. And the battery fits in there just really, really nice, right? We've got the top and the whole shoot and match. I don't want to just hook the wires directly to this, though. Um, I really don't want to want to do that because it, um, quite honestly, it it if the wires bang into each other or whatever, or you know. I don't, I don't want the wires getting into trouble. I really do want to switch in it. So let's hack it all together and see what kind of jump pack we can come up with. So this particular jump pack, um, everything is well componentized. And by that I mean like I could get, once I unbolt the switch, right, I could take it right out and... It wouldn't be all that difficult to uh, to mount this switch in the top of the box, right? We're, we're kind of after being able to do that, right? Looks like I'm even going to be able to pull this um, label off and uh, use that. Always very good things. Um, the battery's out and quite dead. 
Um, I did these. Be careful when you take these off the switch because you don't want to break the switch, right? You want to kind of hang on to the cable as you twist the bolts off. So anyway, I'm taking everything out of here and recycling as much of it as possible. When you build something, nice fab work gets extra points. And you guys could see I put that grid thing in there. What I'm going to do is drill that center hole first. And you guys could see the way I set the grid so that I'm all nice and centered. So I'm going to um, center punch this, drill that hole, then get the centers on the other holes by moving the grid around. And because I have the big hole drilled, I can center this template right into it. And that way everything goes together nicely. It's, it doesn't look like a hack job. You guys could see I drilled the center hole, then I have the template lined up, then I have the grid. I think you guys could see the grid. And you just drill that hole, line the grid up within each one of these, tap them, and it should all come out beautifully. Okay, I got it all wired up. It's upside down, but... You can see the little light comes on here. That's when you turn it on, right? Negative, negative. I put the little clip on there so it doesn't pull through. I use this kind of wire, so just in case I'm pulling the top off, I don't tear things up, right? Um, I think you guys could see it there so it doesn't pull out. So now it's just a matter of putting everything together and life should be good right um, just putting the top on put the straps back on it here it is all done and packaged up once again it's got the locks on it right we got the strap easy enough to pick up you can see the wires hanging off of it when you turn it on you can see the little light comes on it could literally be on for months before that batter that light would uh would kill the battery i mean it's like 25 milliamps so here we have it um i have one thing i have left to do i want to put one of these wires on it so that i can um trickle charge it you know charge it off the viking over here right so i am going to do that but before we do that what I want to do is finish up this video and actually show you guys the whole thing working. So now, let's see how well this thing works, right? Positive on the lug, negative on the body, and round and round it goes. Turns over nice and quick. Let me set up the camera, see if we can't get this thing to start. It's been troublesome and... You're going to see another video on troubleshooting what its problems are. Okay, I think you guys could see everything. Portable CDI box is on. Choke is on. Do we want to start? <laughs> Now, I built this, and a lot of you guys say, well, you know, you could go out and buy yourself a brand new one for 60 bucks, give or take a little bit. That is true. You can go buy yourself a brand new one for 60 bucks. But every year for 25 bucks, you can put a nice fresh battery in there every two years, three years, depending on how well you take care of it. And this thing can more or less last you forever, right? You don't need to have a cluster of dead um, jump boxes floating around. Particularly my problem with most of them is they start getting weak. And then, you know, you kind of, I kind of baby them along see how much longer I could get out of it. And the next thing I know, I've carried three different jump boxes to something like this project, trying to get it started. Each one of them has a little bit, but not quite enough. I also like to be able to hit the switch to turn it on and off, 
right to when I'm engaging the starter. Not all jump boxes have that switch. So when you're troubleshooting all terrain vehicles, that's really handy. The, um, the light is also handy, right? So you could see is if you're turning it on and nothing's happening, am I getting power out to the leads? As long as that LED is lighting up, the answer is yes. So got everything there that I like. If I were to improve on it, right, because you can always make things better, I would probably, perhaps right here, put a uh, digital voltmeter so that when you turn it on, you could see what the voltage reading is. If it's up over 12 and a half, you know, you're all, all up there tight and all. Your battery is really good. If it's less than 12 and a half, then you could start thinking about charging it back up, right? Once again, I got to put the uh, additional tail on it so that I can trickle charge it. I want to be able to use the Viking. That way, um, quite honestly, you could plug it in and leave it plugged in forever. Once the Viking brings it up to full charge, it just keeps it at float, doesn't overcharge the battery, and it could be in a state of constant standby. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this project. Um, if you did, please give me the old thumbs up and share. Um, and if you didn't, well, if you did or didn't, either way, leave a comment. But if you uh, really didn't like it, do leave a comment. By the way, one of you guys also recommended using the Walmart battery for 25 bucks. I just took it the next step and put it in a box. I then took it one more step by putting that switch on the box. Anyway, I want to thank you all once again for dropping by to watch and comment and subscribe. Please remember, feet down, heads up, and get out and enjoy each and every day. Bye now.